We return to our story in the year 1991. SGI is a reasonably successful Unix workstation manufacturer which currently produces the Personal Iris and Power Series product lines. These product lines have grown SGI's revenue from $86 million in 1987 to $420 million in 1990, but 1991 is about to see SGI introduce one of its most recognizable machines of all time. As CEO Ed McCracken said at the time, the PC and workstation worlds are converging. Hey guys, this is Dodoid. So in today's video, we're going to continue our SGI history, starting from the Indigo and going all the way up to the Indy. It's only three years, but it was sure eventful, so let's get right into that. Also, I have a feeling this series is going to be four parts now, because there's a lot to say about the early 90s, there's a lot to say about the late 90s, and then we still have the fuel in the Tesro. So let's get right into that. On June 22, 1991, Silicon Graphics announced their Iris Indigo workstation. The exterior of the Indigo was completely new, and many consider it to be the best-looking SGI. More interestingly, however, the IP12 hardware inside was very closely related to the earlier 4D35. The only major difference was the absence of a VME bus. While at first glance this seems like a lazy attempt to make an existing system look new, this was in fact the Indigo's largest breakthrough, allowing the system to be sold for just $8,000. Only a few years earlier, a professional Iris cost almost ten times that much. For the first time, SGI had a computer under $10,000. SGI now had the Indigo as a replacement for the personal Iris, but for high-end visualization systems, SGI's users still had to buy power series machines. This all changed in 1992 with the introduction of the last SGI to use the Iris brand, the Iris Crimson. While it lost the multiprocessor capabilities of the power series, it gained the new R4000 processor. The R4000 was not only the first 64-bit MIPS processor, but the first 64-bit microprocessor ever, making the Crimson not only the first 64-bit SGI machine, but one of the first computers ever to use a 64-bit microprocessor. While the Crimson is quite a rare system, and names like Indy and Onyx may be better known, it may be SGI's most seen system due simply to one scene in Jurassic Park. The Crimson's MIPS R4000 processor is a story of its own. Just like the R2000 and R3000, it was developed by MIPS computer systems. While MIPS processors are most commonly associated with SGI hardware, MIPS actually tried to make their own workstation known as the MIPS Magnum. This, combined with the development of the R4000, was extremely expensive, and despite developing some of the most advanced processors of their time, MIPS was struggling to survive. If MIPS went bankrupt, SGI would lose the processors that powered their systems, and the only ones capable of running IRIX. SGI knew this, and in 1992 they agreed to acquire MIPS computer systems for $333 million so as to secure the supply of future processors. 1993 begins with the release of the Indigo 2 in January, a continuation of the popular Indigo. At launch, the product was only available with an R4400 CPU and SGI Extreme graphics. This was a somewhat high-end configuration of the Indigo 2, and it actually wasn't until later that cost-reduced versions were introduced. That same month, the SGI Onyx was released. The Onyx merged the Crimson's R4000 processor with the multiprocessor support of the Power Series systems, and added the new Reality Engine 2 and VTX graphics systems. It supported up to 2GB of RAM in desk size, while rack side systems max out at 16GB. Sorry MacBook Pro, you're 23 years late. At this point, SGI has two product categories, just as they have since the Personal Iris and Power Series launched, but a third category of SGI machine is about to enter the market. In early 1993, if you wanted a cheaper SGI than the Indigo 2, you bought the fast-aging Indigo R4000, but this is about to change. In July 1993, SGI released their new Indie workstation. Like the Indigo before it, performance was not the Indie's strong point. With a 100MHz R4000 PC processor, unaccelerated frame buffer graphics that could only show 200 56 colors, 16 megabytes of RAM, and no hard drive at all, the now famous phrase, Indigo without the go, was internally coined by SGI product marketing manager Mark Hughes, and eventually leaked online. The Indy's strong point was its price, at $4,995. For the price of an Indigo 2, you could have six Indies. So in just three years, SGI has replaced the Personal Iris with the Indigo, the Power Series with the Crimson, then replaced the Indigo with the Indigo 2, and the Crimson with the Onyx. Next episode, we're going to start with the O2 and go over the late 90s, and like I said, it'll probably be a four-part series now. So thanks for watching. Dodo is still a very, very small channel, so if you'd like to see us grow, then please do subscribe, and until next time, bye!